Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's go over this guided practice. Now, I wanted you guys to try to do this on your own. Uh, hopefully, you did. So remember, this uh, whole section is on. Um, yeah, thank you. I don't need any assistance. But yes, it is on the distributive property. So what we're going to do is we have to distribute the 4 through the parentheses. So 4 times x is 4x, right? And then 4 times positive 8 is a positive 32, Wait. 32 right? Oh, I got it right? And then you have the minus 4, and then that's equal. So everything else stays the same. Now, what's interesting is that you can combine like terms. What's 32 minus 24? 28. 28. Now, what about this 4x? Can I combine that with a constant? No. No, it's a variable. If it has an x and the other thing doesn't have an x, they're not the same. So this just stays 4x. So now, remember, our goal is to get it to look like x equals some stuff. Huh? Well, because you have a big brain and you need to use your brain. The student asks, oh, I can. The calculators do this. The calculator actually can. But I'm not going to teach you that because I'm going to. you're actually a calculator. I'm going to teach you how to use the calculator you were born with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quit whining. All right, next one. So this becomes 4x plus 20. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Back up. So you got me distracted with your complaining. I need to move this x over to the other side. So I'm going to add 2x here. Whatever I do on one side, i got to do to the other. So when I add 2x to both sides, I get 6x. Then the other thing I'm going to do is I want to move this 28 over to here. So I have to subtract 28. Well, that's the next step. So I have 28 here, and I'm going to subtract 28 from here and subtract 28 from here. So now I have 6x is equal to 34 minus 28. Oh, it hurts. Oh, it hurts. Oh, uh, six. Um, that's what you guys do, by the way. I knew it was six about 20 minutes ago. Um, so then, now what do I do? Well, on that next step, I have to remember that to get x by itself, 6x is the same as 6 times x. So I do the inverse of multiply, which is to divide by 6, because that's what I want to move. And then whatever I do on one side, I do on the other. 6 divided by 6 is 1. The answer is 1. Now you say to yourself, why was the calculator going to do that? So your calculator actually can help you get the answer. I'm going to show you guys. Hurry up, grab a calculator. Go, 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 go. Move it, move it, move it. I don't know why we go through this every day. You guys should probably start grabbing the calculators when you walk in the door. But whatever. You guys did that at the beginning of the year. So anyway, I'm going to keep teaching. So you go to your y equals. Here's a little trick, a little ditty. I think I showed you this once before. You can solve any equation on your calculator or at least find the solution, not solve. You can find the solution by simply graphing the left-hand side of the equal sign. In other words, I'm going to say 4 times the quantity x plus 8, stop talking and start listening, minus 4, that's the left-hand side of the equal sign. And then in Y2, I'm going to put the right-hand side of the equal sign, which is 34 minus 2X. Oops. Uh, we want X. So how do I turn that off? There we go. X. So notice that, and let me make this big um, so you guys can see it. Notice that Mr. Adams... Uh, we'll move this over here. This is the left-hand side of the equal sign in Y1. The right-hand side of the equal sign is Y2. Now, I just did the algebra, and I know that X equals 1. So in my window, I'm just going to hit Zoom Standard, which will include positive 1 for X. Hit Enter. Uh-oh, I guess it doesn't. So now I need to zoom out. So mm, it's a big one. So let's put... For my x min, I'm going to put 0. For my x max, I'm going to put 5, because I know the solution is x equals positive 1. Now, for the y value, it looks like it's positive, so I'm going to put y min at 0. 10 is not enough, so let's plug in 30 and see. Now, when I hit graph, right, remember how to get there? You hit window, 
that pulls this stuff in. So put zero for X min. Uh, and you could play around with these numbers. Remember, I'm establishing the window. So my X value goes from zero to five. My Y value is going to go from zero to 30. So I can manipulate this. And basically, I want to fit the graph to where both lines cross. And right now, we only see one line. So let's go back, hit graph. Oh, what do I need to do? It looks like it crosses somewhere up here. So what is that? What do I need to change in the window? What goes up, X or Y? Y. Y. So my Y maximum needs to be what? Increased, right? It needs to be bigger. So go to go to window. What do you want to change that to? Oh, yeah, let's do 50. Let's graph that and see if that does anything. Did I? Where did it go? Oh, yeah, oh, it's yeah. got to be 5, 0. My bad. I wanted to do 50. There you go. Okay. Now, we could see if it crosses at 1 by simply hitting, remember, the calculation button. See where that says above the trace button? In blue, it says calc. So hit second, trace, and that pulls up a calculate menu. Which one helps us find the intersection? Who said intersect? You're a genius. Anyways, let's go. I Don't try to claim it after she said it. So now what I want to do is I select intersect. You move the cursor till you get pretty darn close. Now we did the algebra. We know it's one. We're just double checking to make sure that we are, in fact, geniuses. So I, I can't get right on one. I can get close. So I hit enter. Then it'll want me to get a little closer on the red line. I'll move it a little bit. Then I can guess. Uh, it's as close as I can get. Yep. The intersection occurs when x equals 1. Both equations will equal 32 if you let x equal 1. See how I did that? Think this is a game? You think I'm playing around? We really only care about the x value for now, okay? So I set all that to just we'll just post this here so you guys kind of can see it. I'll make it a little bit smaller though. Now I still am teaching you algebra, which means I want you to do the algebra part, okay? But if you're taking a test like the PSAT, and you can use the calculator to get the answer. Is Mr. Adams going to be upset that you double check your answer on the calculator? Yeah. No, not on the uh, PSAT. Okay, so let's do the next one. Are you guys ready? Um, actually, I'll leave that up there for just a second.